What are transaction isolation levels? As the name itself says, when we have multiple transactions within an application which run against the database, we need to isolate the underlying data for each transaction. That is what we control using the different transaction isolation levels. So they give us transaction concurrency to run multiple transactions in parallel without affecting each other. To understand the transaction isolation levels, you need to understand three database anomalies or transaction anomalies that exist. Number one, dirty reads. Let's say transaction A update is updating the price information of a particular product, one, two, three. In the meantime, even before transaction A commits, transaction B comes in and reads some data from the database with a query that qualifies what transaction A is trying to do. In this case, product number 123. Now transaction B will get all the stale data because transaction A hasn't committed the data yet. This is called a dirty read. At some point, if transaction A rolls back the transaction, transaction B would have already used the data, which will leave the customer unhappy if the price was less than 1000 before. Second anomaly is non-repeatable reads. This is where transaction A reads some data, in this case a product with ID 123. Transaction B comes in and updates the price to 1000. Now transaction A reads the data again, but it will see different set of information as transaction B has committed the data. So there is a difference between when the transaction A read the data for the first time and when it reads it again in the same business logic. Finally, phantom reads. This is where transaction A, this is very similar to repeatable reads except for the data qualifies in the where clause. In this case, transaction A is reading all the products that have price more than 2000. Then transaction B comes in and inserts a new product with price 3000 which qualifies for this WHERE class. Now transaction A reads the data again within the same logic or application or a piece of code and now it will get a different set. An additional product will come back in the results. This is called phantom reads. Now that you understand these three isolation, these three anomalies at the database level or transactions, these anomalies can be avoided by using transaction isolation levels in the Java EE world, there are four transaction isolation levels, transaction, transaction read uncommitted, transaction read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. The transaction read committed, if we use this transaction isolation level, the transaction can read uncommitted data. This is where dirty reads will happen if we use this read uncommitted level. Dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads can occur. All of the anomalies will occur if we use the first level. The second one, transaction read committed, ensures that our transactions read only the committed data. So if we use this level, then we will avoid the dirty reads. Still, we'll have the non-repeatable reads problem. Dirty reads are prevented, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads can still occur. Then comes the transaction repeatable read. This is the popular one, most used one by default. Many databases have this as the default transaction repeatable read. This is where we can prevent the non-repeatable read problem as well. But the phantom reads can still occur. Finally, we have serializable, which is the most strict transaction isolation level and also the less performing. As the transaction isolation level increases, as we switch from read committed, uncommitted to read committed, then to repeatable read and serializable, the performance of our application will go down because as we move closer to serializable, if we use serializable, that means it's almost like no two transactions can access the same set of data at the same time. It could be a table level lock. So in this lecture, you have learned the different anomalies, basically dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads. And you also learned that these three can be avoided using the different isolation levels. And serializable is the most strict and less performing isolation level. 
The other three are okay to use based on the type of application you are developing. Transactional repeatable read is the most popular and most used transaction isolation level.